Hello and welcome to the finale of Halo Reach. I mean, technically the last episode was when we've tackled the final mission of the campaign, but this is the last mission, the last playable mission. More of an epilogue than anything, but still carries a lot of weight along with it. It's the Noble Six's last stand on Planet Reach. As he's the lone wolf, he started off. He, the game opened with Carter telling him, "Hey, you're a lone wolf. Stop being a lone wolf. We're a team." And he said, "Yep, sure thing." But in the end. Noble team has all fallen in their defensive reach, and now it's up to Noble Six to make his last stand. Ah, oh, man. Halo Reach is such, such a good game. I'll, I'll talk a bit more about my thoughts about the campaign as a whole after uh, after this mission's over, which it looks like it's about to be over, because my helmet's already starting to starting to form some cracks. So I imagine the next time I encounter an Elite, I'm guessing we are we are going to uh, we are going to meet our end. Uh, at least I would I would imagine so. Uh I've never actually gone super try hard on this mission, like to see if to like to try to last as long as I could. I did that with some friends. Like whenever I do a call, we try to do that. But solo, never really tried to do it solo. Uh. Anyway. Uh. Yeah, I imagine we're about to get dunked on by this elite. Yep. It didn't take long for Reach to fall. Our enemy was ruthless, efficient, but they weren't nearly fast enough. For you had already passed the torch. And because of you, we found Halo, unlocked its secrets, shattered our enemy's resolve. Our victory, your victory, was so close. I wish you could have lived to see it. But you belong to Reach. Your body, your armor, all burned and turned to glass. Everything. Except your courage. That you gave to us. And with it, we can rebuild. What a great campaign. Also, does it count as it? Does it count a death for that mission? It doesn't. Okay. Well, then I I won't count it for the for the for the final death counter either. But what what an absolutely incredible mission. Or sorry, what an absolutely incredible game. Oh, Halo Reach. It's kind of divisive. I must admit, it's uh probably the most divisive of Bungie's Halo games for a variety of different reasons. But overall, it's it, it's it's got its flaws. Like to, let's to be perfectly clear, it's it's not. It's not a perfect game by any stretch of the imagination, uh, and really, my, the biggest thing that I, I just can't wrap my head around is the contradictions between Reach's storyline and The Fall of Reach, which is one of the best books I've ever read. Like, I, I didn't, I haven't, I didn't actually, for as much as a Halo fan as I am, believe it or not, I didn't actually start to read the Expanded Universe material until March, so I read The Fall of Reach back in March, and I, I loved it. It was, it was seriously so good. If you are even a mild Halo fan... I cannot recommend that book enough. That The Fall of Reach was such a fantastic novel. Uh, but it wasn't until I read it that I was like, wow, this, uh, this really pokes some holes in Halo Reach's campaign, doesn't it? So, you know, th there's, there's some minor things along the way, but the biggest two things are... Um, I, I, it boils down to the, the latchkey discovery and the... The Pillar of Autumn, because, like, there's a bunch of minor stuff throughout the campaign, like, dates being changed and things like that, but that's, like, whatever. The biggest stuff is, what what's the latchkey discovery in this game? I assume that it's the location of the Halo Ring that they're delivering to the Pillar of Autumn, because, 
like, I, I can't imagine what else it would be. But the problem is that that doesn't make any sense, because in the book, when they go to Sigma Octanus, and they have that incredible fight scene, they, that's when they get the location of the Halo Ring. So that doesn't really jive well, and that, like, then again, that's just me assuming that the, the Lashki Discovery they talk about in the game is the Halo Ring, but I don't know what else it would be if it's not that. Like, what else would be that important? I, I genuinely have no clue. So that's one thing. And then there's also the fact that the Pillar of Autumn was up in space during the, f during the final battle on Halo Reach. So the, the, sorry, the final battle on Planet Reach. During the final battle, the Pillar of Autumn was up in space, about to jump to a slip space, not safely docked on the planet waiting for the package. So, you know, it, it's minor stuff like that that just kind of makes it, it pulls my head in two different directions. It's like, but the Fall of Reach is so good, but also this game is good too. It's like, uh, which, which story do I, uh, I'm sure some lore fishing out about there is cobbled together some, uh, slapdash explanation for how it all works together, but I don't, I don't, I don't care enough to do that. Uh, I love the Halo story, but I, I'm, I'm perfectly happy to treat them as two separate canons in my head, but... Uh, anyway, so that's story-wise, that's the biggest thing. Gameplay-wise, sometimes it feels like it's like too heavily focused on the DMR sandbox-wise. Like there was, there's a lot of sections where it's you basically have a DMR for the whole campaign for the most part, which is kind of annoying because it's like you don't really get the ability to experiment with too many other weapons. I was able to use a lot of different weapons throughout the campaign, admittedly, like just uh, trying new strategies and things like that. But fundamentally, you're pretty much always going to have a DMR on you, which does kind of harm the sandbox a little bit. Uh, it, it's, 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 it's not a bad sandbox, it's just not as strong as the other games. Then there's Bloom, which, pff, whatever, it, it's, it's, a, it's a nuisance, sure, but it's not game-breaking. Uh, armor abilities, they're mainly a problem in multiplayer, but even in the campaign, like I, like I talked about in Nightfall, uh, they're just a downgraded version of equipment with less strategic variety. There's, they don't really, like, they, they're not as, there's not a pivotal to the strategy of the game as the equipment is. And also, uh... Like, they also just, they're not as open-ended, so, like, Halo 3, bubble shields, political covers, auto turrets, regeneration fields, things like that. All those, all that stuff could be used in a million different ways in all, in all the different encounters. Every encounter in that game could use one of those abilities in some creative way. But this game, it's like, you really only have sprint, and then occasionally they give you something else. But for the most part, they just, like hand delivery like if there's a certain section that needs a certain armor ability such as active camo and nightfall armor lock in exodus jetpacks in exodus drop shields like they, they have a habit of giving you the certain the specific armor ability you need at the specific opportunity without giving you much choice of the matter so it's just not it's not as strong as, as the, the equipment abilities in halo 3 uh the concussion rifle seems a little broken uh i've always said that about halo reach is like i don't know that that the concussion rifle in the hands of the elites is annoying enough but the fact that they just strapped a concussion rifle to the underside of every spirit dropship was a her was a horrendous decision. And of course, there's the instant death melee, which didn't really affect me too much in this playthrough, but overall, it's, it's still dumb that melee is an instant kill. I mean, so most of the time it is. Sometimes you can get lucky and survive the melee attack, but 9 times out of 10, it's going to be an instant death if you get melee to close and personal. So that's a lot of criticisms for the game, but that's... Like, all the minor stuff. The This game excels in so many different areas. Level design, fantastic, really open-ended, allowing for so many different creative ways to approach the encounters. Um, the variety of the environments you fight in, the, the variety of the levels themselves, the variety of the missions, the variety of the uh, enemy encounters, the variety of gameplay types. Just just the, the, the level design is really excellent all around. Soundtrack, obviously, is amazing. Uh... Enemy AI is brilliant as always. We really got to see the AI shine in this mission, in that one section where all the elites were rushing us at once. That was great. And the thing with the story is, like, if you divorce the story from the Fall of Reach, it's really heartbreaking. Because the story starts out, and it's just a group of Spartans trying to fend off a Covenant invasion from Planet Reach. So everything you do for the first half of this campaign is constantly trying to push back the Covenant. Uh... You, at first it's just like, okay, so the Covenant are here, great, and then we push back the Covenant attack at Sword Base. Then we actually start to gain intel on the Covenant, and then we launch our first uh, proper assault and tip of the spear, and we take out the Spire, but that is immediately counteracted by the fact that the Super Carriers come into orbit and takes down a, a, a Halcyon-class cruiser, I think. Uh, so, then we go aboard the, space, the Super Carrier, and we destroy that, we're like, yes, we just won the war, or, or we just won the battle... The, the ship's been destroyed, but then a million more of those exact same ships. We spent 
the entire mission trying to destroy one ship and then an entire army of them comes in right after it. It's like, that's the oh shit moment when you realize things are about to go really, really wrong. So then from that point, the story shifts from repel the Covenant to defend the planet. Like, get all the civilians off the planet, evacuate the place, and then just save what we can. And then once everyone's been evacuated, then the plan, the plan shifts from, okay, forget Reach, um... We need to get the we need to get Halsey's data package off the off off reach and onto the pillar bottom. So then that becomes their mission for the final bit of the campaign. And then that that really feels like just like the covenant of overtaking the planet. It's an uphill battle from start to finish to get through to the pillar bottom, and it's just so well paced all around. And just seeing every member of Noble Team die except June, he survives because he stays back because he's a sniper. But I mean, they, they, they all essentially die in the campaign, and it's just really heart-wrenching to see all those scenes. Cat's Death probably hits me the hardest because it's just so sudden, it's such a shock, there's no build-up to it at all, um, which, you know, helps for the helps the emotional value of the scene. But, I mean, it's just every death. George, big guy, dies in a big explosion. Cat's, the brains of the group, dies from a needle rifle shot to the head. Um, who's next? Uh, I think it's Carter, no, sorry, June. June survives because he stays back because he's a sniper. Carter goes down with the ship. Emil is the knife fanatic and he dies from a sword stab. And then Noble Six, the lone wolf, ends up dying alone. So it's very symbolic how they all die. And it, they all tie into the narrative super well. Ah, oh, man. Rage is such a good game. It has its problems. It's not perfect. Like I said, I just listed a bunch of criticisms. But it's still a damn good game. And it, it sets the stage perfectly for Combat Evolve, which we'll be starting up next. Uh, we'll starting about, Actually, we'll start that up tomorrow. It also is just the perfect way to send out Bungie, because this was their last Halo game they ever made, and just th to have it come full circle like that, with the first mission of Combat Evolve being also the same title as the last mission of Halo Reach, ending with the Pillar of Autumn, ending with going, like, that the last shot of Halo Reach is the first shot of Combat Evolve, it's just such a perfect lead-in. Oh man, such a good game. Such a good game. Alright, well, that'll be it for now. Hopefully you enjoyed the Let's Play. I know I sure as hell enjoyed replaying through Halo Reach, but now, before we go, it's time to do the death counter. So, I don't actually know how many times we died in that last mission because I forgot to check the death counter and record it down, so I'm gonna have to count them in editing, but I will have the, the total on screen in editing. So, that is Halo Reach completed on a legendary difficulty with a total of zero deaths in Noble Actual, two deaths in Winter Contingency, three deaths in Oni Sword Base, one death on Nightfall, two deaths in Tip of the Spear, three deaths in Long Night of Souls, two deaths in Exodus, one death in New Alexandria, one death in the package, and however many deaths was in the last mission, I honestly don't know because I haven't edited the video yet, and I, I, I didn't check, I usually check the death counter on the post Carnage report uh, to see what it to see what it is but I forgot to do at this time so I'll put it up on screen now all culminating in a total of this many deaths which looking at the amount of deaths we have in the previous missions not that bad that was a pretty good run of Halo Reach honestly we didn't die all that much we, we died less than four times in each mission pretty impressive for Halo Reach so if I do so myself but that's it hopefully you enjoyed this series I know I sure did and next uh, tomorrow we'll be starting up Halo Combat Evolved Anniversary I'm undecided so I, I think I think I'll play with the anniversary graphics I, I already have a let's play on my channel of the classic graphics so I'll, I guess I'll do anniversary this time, the remaster graphics. So, but either way, uh, that'll be it for now. Thanks for watching. See you for next time. I hope to catch you all tomorrow. We're going to be starting up Phase 3 of Project Infinite with Halo Combat Evolved Anniversary. Goodbye.